Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the three different types of blood capillaries. So first, briefly, what are capillaries? They are the smallest blood vessels and they have the thinnest walls. They are commonly referred to as exchange vessels because they are the only blood vessels that allow for exchange between the fluid in the blood and the fluid outside of the blood vessels. Um, so there are three types of blood capillaries. The most common is a continuous capillary. So these are just your normal blood capillaries that we have in almost every tissue out throughout the body. Uh, they allow for normal capillary exchange, which means that small things can pass through like gases and glucose and things like that. And larger things like proteins and cells are prevented from passing through. Uh, continuous capillaries are also part of the blood-brain barrier, and so in that location, uh, the, the exchange is actually even clo more closely regulated. The um, capillaries are even tighter and more continuous, so it doesn't allow uh, as many things to pass through because we need tight regulation when it comes to blood supply to the brain. Then fenestrated capillaries, that is our next type. Um, fenestrated, anything fenestrated means that it has little holes in it. Uh, so fenestrated capillaries are leakier than continuous capillaries. They're leakier in the sense that they allow larger things to pass through. So some of larger molecules. So there are two really important places where we find these fenestrated capillaries. One is in the small intestine where we absorb the majority of our nutrients. So having fenestrated capillaries allows for larger molecules to be absorbed from the food that we're eating through the intestinal wall and taken up into the fenestrated capillaries there. The other important location is in the kidneys because we need to allow for waste products that may be larger than would normally pass through a continuous capillary. So we need to allow waste products to be extracted from the blood and excreted through the urine. Finally, our last type is sinusoid capillaries. Anything sinus is referring to space. So like think about the, the uh, sinuses in your skull. So we're talking about spaces, larger spaces. So sinusoid capillaries have larger spaces in their walls, bigger gaps in the walls that allow much larger things to pass through. So these are the rarest type out of our three and they are the most leaky because they have the largest space. Um, so we find these only in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow because they allow for larger things to pass through, including entire cells. So in those locations, it's important because we need to be able to uh, put in new uh, blood cells, like from bone marrow production. So we need to allow blood cells to enter into the blood supply for the first time. And then the liver and spleen are also going to take cells out, put cells back in uh, to help regulate the number of red blood cells, the number of uh, white blood cells, platelets, and everything that is traveling in the blood. So uh, sinusoid capillaries are only found in those locations because of their important role in regulating the cells that are in blood. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.